Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin Young. He is Josh Tech. Welcome to Fast Break Friday on a Thursday right here on Twitter and X and YouTube and all the places you find our videos. I appreciate you tuning in today. You're going to have to forgive me. I'm playing hurt today. I got something going on up here. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to try to I'm going to try to power through. So today's show is probably better for everybody that Josh Tech is going to be chiming in a little bit more. Uh, Josh, how you doing, man? Are you going to carry the load for us today? Absolutely. Uh, I'm glad that I'm not the one that's sick. I feel like over the last year or so, I've been sick quite a bit. I think it's just uh, my body was so used to like being masked up and distanced that like my immunity is dipped and like I kind of just got sick quicker. So it feels good to be the healthy one of, of the duo. This time. <laughs> well, it's funny. Last night we, we were getting new carpet in our house and uh, we had a guy come over to, you know, to give us a, give us an appraisal and whatnot. And he goes, he goes, man, has anybody ever told like, my voice was really deep and like really raspy last night? He goes, has anybody ever told you that you'd be great for like radio and podcast? And I started laughing. I like, never have I heard that before. So yeah, it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny that that I was going on, but I definitely sound like Wolfman. If any you, everybody that's watching this is probably too young to even know who the Wolfman is, but uh, that's definitely what I sound like. But listen, enough of my medical issues. Uh, we have a lot to go through. This visit weekend is absolutely stacked. We've got some. Blue Bloods having some big time players coming on trips. We've got a lot of guys that we're very familiar with over the last two or three years that are taking visits all over the place. A number of Peach State guys are taking trips. Um, another number of players on our commitment watch. Uh, we got a lot of campuses of the weekend, a lot of visitors of the weekend. Man, so much to go through. Uh, and so, Josh, I'm going to lean on you today a lot. I'll chime in where I can. Uh, if I have any voice left by the end of this show i think that's a miracle in and of itself so let's start from the top let's talk about the campus of the weekend from your point of view josh tech where are we going this weekend when we're talking about the visit trail for the class of 2024 and beyond yeah so i think this is kind of interesting i feel like it's been a little bit quiet in durham uh to start the late summer recruiting cycle uh but that's not going to be the case much longer because duke is having a big weekend this weekend uh they have they're hosting 2025 wing forward Nate Mint, and they're hosting 2024 um you know top 25 ish player con knipple uh, one of my personal favorite guys to watch in the class uh so this is a this is a big weekend for duke big weekend for john shire uh it doesn't hurt that their football team has all kinds of momentum they're ranked 21st in the country i believe right now so that campus should be buzzing they host northwestern on saturday so that's i mean that's a big game northwestern's not bad um and obviously big 10 versus acc that's like you know, you don't get that every day for a home-and-home -home environment. So I think that campus will be a buzz. They have two big-time prospects on campus. So I think just the atmosphere in Durham this weekend is going to be electric. It's so funny hearing you talk about Duke football. When I first started at Rivals many, 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 many years ago, I, Duke was my beat, and I had to cover Duke football. And I think in the four years that I had that beat, I literally think Duke football won – four games in four years. I think it was, it was definitely a baptism by fire, but yeah. um, let's talk about Con Knipple for a second. Uh, he's got a very busy week, actually yeah. a number of visits, uh, but Duke certainly anytime you got a shooter like that, um, particularly in like that upper Midwest, that Chicago area. I don't know if we've seen too many guys from, from the state of Wisconsin going to Duke over the years, but it doesn't surprise me though, that, here we have John Shire. Chicago has always been a place where Duke's recruited because of Krzyzewski. Obviously, John Shire is there. But um, I'm sure that will be part of the conversation. And I'm sure that Con Knipple, one of the most elite shooters, will have a lot to talk with John Shire about. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, for th this weekend for Con kind of feels like the weekend. Um, he's got a visit. To, so he's going to Duke. And then he's also going to Virginia. Um, so he's going to come down. He's going to hit the, the two, you know, two of the biggest ACC powers on the East Coast. So he's going to. You know, he's going to get his fill. And, like, I cannot imagine that Khan finishes this weekend and uh, commitment isn't imminent. Duke feels like a great fit. Virginia feels like a great fit. He's already visited Marquette. Like, if I had to put a top three, that would be my top three for him. Um, so, yeah, John Shire and Duke, big one for Knipple. Um, And then also, yeah, I think I – don't, I don't remember which days he's going to which, but then also going up to Charlottesville to see Tony Bennett. Well, if I – for me personally, I, I have no insight on this. I, I actually like the Virginia fit for him a lot. 
and yeah. the way that Tony Bennett runs his guys. I think Knipple could be a really good factor. Listen, we've got Darren Harris and Isaiah Evans already on board for Duke. Darren Harris, not saying he's the same guy, but a guy that can score, a guy that, quite frankly, it seems like he he's better now than when he was when he committed to Duke. Uh, feels like forever ago, like three years ago. That's what it feels yeah, like. that one he, he came off the board way early. I think it was yeah, last year after Peach Jam or something like that. If Duke offers you, it's hard to say no to that. that early. Yeah. So I can appreciate that. And uh, an interesting note, like obviously, like, or not obviously, but, you know, uh, this is not like inside information or anything like that. But like, I'm also with you on the Virginia lean. Uh, but an interesting note is that the first time I ever saw Khan was at our best of the South in 2021. Yeah. Uh, he was playing with Phenom U there. And the two schools that were there to watch him were Wisconsin, his uh, his hometown school or, you know, home state school and Virginia. So Virginia has been on him really early. They had an assistant there at the time. And then um, obviously Tony Bennett's been out to see him a million times. So, so Virginia has been one of those schools that's kind of been out on him early and they've been out on him often. So keep an eye out. Yeah. I, I like keep, I like keeping their eyes on that as well. Uh, let's switch over to blue bloods for a second. Kentucky, obviously we've talked about them a lot um, here on fast break Friday, but another big weekend for them. Uh, who's coming to, who's going to be in town in Lexington. Yeah. So this is another one for me that I'm kind of keeping my eyeballs on. I'm really side eyeing this one really hard. Uh, Billy Richmond is coming to town. And this is a big one, man. I think, you know, you and I are both big fans of his, you know, his current production. But I think you and I are even bigger fans of what he can be long term. Bigger yeah. kind of wing, can play with the ball in his hands a little bit. Super athletic, super competitive, super defender. Uh, does a lot well that we like a lot. Um, and he's going to Lexington. And I think that this one is so interesting because he had he played for the New Jersey Scholars AAU program. And if you look at Kentucky's current roster, two of their bigger name freshmen, DJ Wagner, Aaron Bradshaw, also came out of that program. So the connection is there. The, uh, you know, the big time atmosphere at Kentucky is there. The big time player is there. This could just be a marriage uh, that that's a match made in heaven. Camden High, Kentucky JV, potentially. Yeah, honestly, that's the way that's the way it's trending right now, right? It is. It is. Uh, you always have to keep your eyes on Kentucky, no doubt about it. I'm kind of looking down our notes here. We have a number of other guys. Let me kind of jump ahead. Speaking, we'll stick with kind of like the big timers for a second. Yeah. We've got Trey Johnson, who's at Link Academy. Uh, he's going to be hitting the road. going to be down in Tuscaloosa and Alabama. Yep. Uh, in Nate Oates, listen, since he's really been in Kentucky, he's been, he's been throwing the net nationwide, going after dudes rather than just going after regions and certain types of players. He wants the very best guys. So Trey yep. Johnson is going to be taking a visit down there. Um, and I know he's in Texas, and, and I think this one will be really interesting to see as it kind of comes down the wire for, for Trey Johnson uh, to kind of see which direction he goes as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go up to Tallahassee or down to Tallahassee, actually, if we're speaking geographically from uh, from Tuscaloosa, down to Florida State. VJ Edgecombe, a guy that uh, it's good to see. I mean, listen, we put him in our in our top five, top six in our rankings. I think collectively now he's he's risen up in almost everybody's rankings now. Uh, where he's that dude. Florida State was in there earlier with VJ Edgecombe. Can the balls? Can the balls? Can the Knolls see the medicine start yeah. to really mess with my brain? It's clouding my my thought process here. Can the Knolls pull off the top ten steal of VJ Edgecombe? Yeah, of course. This uh, VJ Edgecombe kind of fits the mold of a lot of the Florida State players we've seen come out of there in the past. Uh, great defender, great scorer, great athlete. He, I mean, I think he can. I think that there is legitimate one and done potential, but I also think that there is also like that kind of two and done potential that you've seen out of a guy like like Donovan Mitchell or something like that, where you know he has a really good freshman year, comes back and then just vaults himself to a different category um, as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. So I think there's also that in, in play. And Florida State has had a lot of those guys too. Um, so yeah, I absolutely think they can get this one done. Uh, one thing to look out for is I believe that BJ Edgecombe concludes his visit tour with duke so that's another one to kind of just pencil in side eye i believe that's coming middle october or something like that so just kind of be on red alert for that i love it man like the the last year for vj edgecombe has been really story oh, it's people. been one of the best stories in high school basketball it's been really fun to watch and i remember i have i had no idea anything about vj edgecombe i don't even think i had heard the name very much until you came onto our show after some event out west yeah. and you were like oh my god yeah. this guy yeah. And then from there, I saw guys like Andrew Slater tweeting about him and just kind of our peers kind of really ranting and raving about him. And then I got to see him and I was like, yep, lives up to all this hype. Yeah, that's very good. You know, it's funny when he was going, when, when we were going through the notes, him taking this trip to Florida State got me thinking about Vaughn Wafer from way back in the day. And, and Vaughn Wafer was a, 
another guy that was a really fun, energetic, athletic guard. Uh, they ended up going there to Florida State. I'd love to go back in a time machine and put those guys head to head. Uh, let's stay with the connectivity here and move to Missouri. One of Garrett Tucker's favorite visits of the weekend is a guy that we've talked about a lot already here on Fast Break Friday, and that's Chase McCarty going to Missouri. And Missouri seems like they're another program that's just like, we're going after dudes too. Yeah. And, and we're trying to like get this Missouri program back to what it was. Uh, Chase McCarty really like, we love him a lot. Uh, we have yeah. him within our top 35, top 40. Um, I mean, maybe it's top 50. And there, again, the medicine from the brain to the mouth, it's it's quite he a He is journey. above 50 somewhere. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There we go. I like that. Uh, but Missouri is not afraid to go after dudes, and, and it seems like they're really kind of leaning into the success they've had and they're really doing a good job on the recruiting trail. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Um, all right, let me kind of go. This is my visitor watch for the weekend, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and see if this might be my last breath for this pod. I, Larry Johnson has taken a trip to Creighton. And, and, again, we're talking about – we've talked about realignment. And, and I'll be honest, I, I got to Google every time what league Creighton's in. Uh, because they seem to kind of fluctuate. I know they're in the Big East, but like... Yeah, I was about to say, I just had to think about it for a second. But like, think about how many pros that Creighton's been able to produce over the years. Yeah. Right, and like, and that's kind of their whole message. And and kind of like, you know, we always talk about who's the next Gonzaga and whatnot. Creighton's been tremendous forever. I mean, Dana Altman had an unbelievable career there. And if you've ever been to Omaha, like that is a big time, big time atmosphere. That is their pro team. It is. It yeah. is. And they have a 17,000 seat arena. They pack it out. And so it's not a big surprise to see Creighton really reeling in some high level guys. And it's not a surprise that Larry Johnson is one of those guys. And we've talked about it offline and maybe a little bit here on the, on the various shows that we've done, but I, I love Larry Johnson. I think he's phenomenal. Um, I think he's a player that, again, I always talk about when you're 20, 21 years old, who are you going to be? Larry Johnson could be a guy that we've talked about. I think it was on our, my guy show, like an outlier, somebody that maybe is outside the top 25 that kind of rises up. Larry Johnson feels like one of those guys. And shout out to Creighton for just keep swinging for the fences and, and really recruiting a high-level player yeah. um, that kind of fits the mold there where we always talk about who's the next Gonzaga, and I hate that conversation because I think it's a little lazy. But really when we talk about the Blue Bloods, I don't know if Creighton, quite frankly, gets enough credit for what they do on the court and more importantly for the players that they target and who they go after on the recruiting front. So to me, Larry Johnson's just one of those players that um, that really kind of speaks to this belief that they're doing things differently and they're doing it in a big way. Also a guy a year ago out of Savannah, Georgia, I don't think too many people outside of Chatham County even knew much about Larry Johnson. So, yeah, absolutely. He's another guy that's taken that big rise. He went to Huntington Prep and now he's at, what, SoCal Academy, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, so he's been a guy that, as soon as he got into the national spotlight, everybody kind of was like, oh, my God, who's this? You know, this guy, he's kind of slowly risen up boards. He, he might have been my favorite player that I saw at Pangos. Um, he was, yeah, he's Pangos. an awesome player. So, yeah, he was great then. Um, should have a big-time high school season. This is a, I think this is a great one if they can get it done at Creighton. Well, they also have, you know, we talked about it in the My Guy show with, with – um, um, Jackson McAndrew. Yeah, there we I always call it. Yeah, Jackson McAndrew, one of the best shooting big men there is in the country. Yeah. Reminding me a lot of Sam Walters, who I was really high on, that went to Alabama. Pro probably better, actually, than him. And as a guy that, honestly, quite frankly, will be a, a guy that NBA scouts are coming in there to see him as well. So yeah. for this class they're building or trying to build, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty impressive one as well. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned Huntington Prep in West Virginia. Let's actually go to the Mountaineers. They've got a big weekend this weekend. Nas Cunningham is the headliner going to be on campus there. And, and listen, Nas Cunningham has been on quite a basketball journey, uh, been coast to coast, been at you know, a lot of the prep schools, been at OTE, uh, been a player that's been in the spotlight, top 25 spotlight for years now. Yeah. Um, and West Virginia, you know, with all the change going on there with Bob Huggins, uh, I feel like a player like Nas Cunningham, at least his, his, his potential and his talent, could be something that, you know, really kind of starts a new era, if you will, there in West Virginia. Yeah, I completely agree. You get that kind of star power, that kind of player with that kind of potential, big, can do a lot of stuff on the floor. Um, he's one of those guys that that hasn't even touched his you know ceiling yet. Like he's still got plenty of room to develop and grow. And um, yeah, if they can get this thing done, then that's a huge feather in the cap for that staff over there. And I think it could kind of turn, maybe not turn, um, but you know, kind of be a shot of life, uh, a reinvigorating factor into the the new 
West Virginia program in this new kind of limbo era that they're kind of existing in right now. Yeah, yeah. And hey, like I believe he was originally from upstate, like up uh, New York, New Jersey area. (laughs) Spent a lot of time in Atlanta. This could be a nice meet in the middle for him. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, you never know. You never know. It's funny with recruiting now, like with every game televised and um, just as much as kids have traveled before they even went to college. Like, I don't know. I mean, I can honestly think when I was a kid, I mean, I, I, I maybe went on an airplane like four times before I graduated high school, honestly. Now kids are like, hey, these kids go on, these kids are on planes more than NBA, NBA teams that's that it feels like i feel like there's always like oh this team's going out west this team's coming out east this team's going up north this team's going to wherever it's just like man all right must be nice if you're if you're not a gold medallion member by the time you graduate high school are you even a prospect right (laughs) that that should be that should be a a a requirement for a top 100 it's like all right show me your status platinum all right you're at least top 50 Okay, Josh, I think we had a little technical difficulty. I don't know what happened, wherever we are, but here we are. We are back. Maybe we went on some sort of like Dayquil long strange trip that I don't know what happened. Yeah, the 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 technology the gods of technology understood that that you weren't at your best, so they weren't at their best either. It happens, man. It happens. So we just gotta roll with it. Okay. All right, let's talk about let's talk about Rakeese Passport for a second. A little yep. little recruiting drama, if you will. Had a visit set up for Miami. Shut that down. Now he's going to Oklahoma. So I don't know. Do I need to read the tea leaves here? Or do we feel like the Sooners may be on the cusp of pulling something off here with one of our favorite guys out of North Carolina? I mean, I would cer- I would certainly read into that a little bit. Like, there's got to be something there, right? There's Where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, yeah, and, if man, if they can get this done paired with the Quoll attack um, commitment that just recently happened – that's that'd be big time for Porter Mosier and, and staff over there. That's that'd be two really great prospects. Um, one in Rakeese Passmore, who's probably going to be a benefit to them immediately. And then uh, pair that with a guy with long term upside and cool attack. I think this is like if they can get this done, obviously, this would be a really great class. For them. Yeah, he was at Mississippi State last week, and, and it was a player that we said, yeah. hey, keep an eye on this one. And I think, do you really quickly, uh, not to kind of derail this, but <laughs> do you think that the SEC move? plays into this like i mean he's kind of yeah. coming here to the south I mean, like, I mean maybe a little bit like what's the closest sec school to Asheville? lexington kentucky tennessee tennessee maybe tennessee probably? yeah it's tennessee yeah. like so may, I mean, maybe a little bit but again yeah. like with so many games now that are broadcast that I, I feel like it doesn't really matter very much yeah like it's funny like i'm out here in phoenix now but like i can i feel like i'm on Saturday, with the exception of like going out in the community, it feels like SEC football Saturday out here. I can get any game that I want sure. here, and it doesn't feel any different than when I was out there. So I feel like that's changing a little bit, but I don't know, maybe maybe a little bit, just the proximity of it. Um, yeah, it just it just kind of felt like I don't know. In a, in a in a day gone by, I don't know that a, a guy from North Carolina would would make this kind of move to go to Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? But now, it just kind of. I guess you're right about the shifting landscape and all that stuff, but it just kind of felt like oh, that's interesting. Well, I know this much. I, I think wherever Keith Passmore goes, he's going to be a contender for leading score in the conference that he goes to. Oh yeah. Uh, the guy can really score. He can really shoot. And if we know anything about, you know, what Oklahoma has been able to do under Porter Mosier is they've been able to have a really successful program. And listen, the university of Oklahoma, they've had some studs play there over the years. And so sure. why can't Keith Passmore potentially be that guy as well? Uh, another guy that we like and that we've seen that we've gotten to know over the years is RJ Jones out of uh, Florida. He's going to visit the Gators. And again, like on a busy weekend with a lot of dudes going a lot of places, this one feels pretty significant. And, and quite frankly, I think it's one of the more important visits of the weekend that maybe gets a little, little uh, undersold with everybody else going all these other places too. Yeah, absolutely. I think this one is, is honestly one of the bigger ones of the weekend that, and like you said, it's kind of getting undersold, but I don't, I don't think you and I um, are diminishing its value. Uh, RJ Jones is a player that you and I both really love. Really great shooter for his I side. should say overshadowed is what I no, 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 no. And yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Um, I just think from a national perspective that this one might not be as like dazzling as the Duke and the, you know, whatever. Sure. But this one is could be significant because of 
how valuable he is as a shooter at his size, truly just an outstanding shooter. We've seen that multiple times throughout his, you know, his career. And I think what makes this one significant is that he's visited Florida before. So him yeah. taking this kind of feels like a, all right, I'm going to go back and make sure that this is the place, you know? So if, if he commits or, you know, commits shortly after or kind of ends up committing to the Gators down the line, I feel like he could turn back to this visit as being like the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will. Yeah. To have a homegrown Floridian go visit Florida feels very noteworthy, right? Like Exactly. Some of the guys that are in Florida are like transplants at a prep school and whatnot, but R.J. Jones is – is a, is a tried and true Floridian coming up the ranks. Um, and I, I think that one is a really big one for sure yep. for Todd Golden and his guys. I'm losing my voice. I'm going to throw it to you, Josh. We got a number of players from the Peach State taking visits. Why don't you go ahead and run through them, and I'm going to rest this thing up a little bit. All right. So I think the one you've got to look at first and foremost is Jakari Harris is going to Purdue. Um, that, that they have been, that those two have been linked for seemingly forever. Um, whenever I think of Purdue, I think of Jakari Harris. Whenever I think of Jakari Harris, I think of Purdue. Um, part of that is because I feel like half the time I go see Grayson play or Grayson practice or Grayson do anything, Matt Painter or somebody in a Purdue uh, shirt is there. Uh, I've seen Matt Painter come down to Georgia multiple times. I remember last year during the time right before the state playoffs, they were playing Newton, and uh, Matt Painter flew down just for that game. He brought his parents with him, so I got to meet his parents, which is kind of funny. Um, uh, and then uh, there was a point in time last year where, he, you know, during this time last year, he came down multiple times to see Jakari at, at Grayson. So they've been really kind of emphasizing this, um, how important he is to their recruiting cycle, I guess. And so this one feels like it could be a commitment to watch, right? Um, outside of that, Micah Smith, he's kind of had a big commitment tour. Um, his, his journey is taking him to, uh, Southwest Florida with Florida Gulf coast now. And this one's significant because I believe he only has one more, uh, visit scheduled and that's to Clemson next week or the week after. Um, so it seems like a decision could be imminent for Micah Smith, uh, one just to kind of keep an eye on. And then last one I have right now is KJ green. He's going to UCF. He's kind of just now getting ready to start his, um, mm -hmm. visit for, but UCF, Florida state. And South Carolina are three big visits to watch, and that all starts off with UCF this weekend. I love it. Uh, we'll stay at the Peach State. Let's move to the collegiate side. Georgia Tech has really started to put together some significant weekends of visits. Uh, this is a big-time underclassman weekend there on the flats as Caleb Holtz coming over from Alabama. Caleb Holtz, I mean, one of the top, I don't know, 20 high school players in the country regardless of class, maybe even better than that. I love Caleb Holtz. I think he's tremendous. Uh, he's going to be on campus at Georgia Tech, as is Tony Bryant, a guy out of the state of Florida that I know that you've seen before down at one of Scott Golden's events uh, from the Tampa area. That's a high upside guy that, that for me, the film, I think he's tremendous on film. Yeah, uh, both these guys, high upside guys for sure. High upside guys, yeah. And Ethan Lathan, another guy uh, from the 2024 class that's a top 100 guy, big man. Uh, really intriguing. I mean, I've talked to so many college coaches about Ethan Lathan, thinking about what he can become. Uh, so all three of those guys are going to be on the campus of Georgia Tech. I'm sure they're going to have other guys there as well, but those are the three of the notable ones. And then Bishop Boswell scheduled a visit out in Athens to UGA, and yep. I don't know if there's a better place to be on a Saturday in the fall. Is it fall yet there in Atlanta, or is it still pretty sticky? Uh, it's – no, you know, not, 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 not really. Yeah. It's in between, but it's close enough. Like, he'll get the he'll get the vibe for sure. We, we in Arizona have a straight week of nothing – over a hundred in the forecast, which to us feels like winter time. Okay. So if, if you were to come over here, you'd be like, damn, this feels like fall. But for me, it's like not quite there. I'm a big fall guy. So I'm, I'm a purist in that regards. So it's not there yet, but we're close. We're getting there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mid October, late October when the leaves really start to change. Yep. But nevertheless, Saturdays in Athens in school season is what I should say. It's magic. Yeah. It, it, it really is different. Like it, it, I've been up there a few times for that kind of time and it's great. This is a fun fact. And anybody that's watching this probably won't believe me when I say this. You know, I've never gone to Athens for a football game. That That is surprising. I've never been for a football game. I've been for basketball, but I've been around town during the fall around football games. So I kind of got in the atmosphere. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm kind of too broke to go to, <laughs> to NBA <laughs> football games. They're, they're not cheap at all. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. I, I just don't know how I never did that. I, yeah. I think the drive when I lived in Cobb County or even up in like, up in North Canton, North Cherokee. Like it was tough to get all the way out to Athens sometimes, but 
Um, yeah, I can't believe I've, I've never done that. I've been to Alabama more than I've ever gone to EGA, uh, which is interesting. All right, let's talk about commitment watch. There's a number of guys. We, we talked about a couple of guys already, Rakeese Passmore being one of those guys. But there, there's a couple that I want to kind of take note of and really kind of pay close attention to. And, and number one is Ja'Kai Howard to Arizona State. He's coming out here to Tempe. Um going to visit the Sun Devils and, and see what their program's all about. I'd keep a really close watch on that one to see what's going to happen there with Ja'Kai Howard. Um, yeah. Couldn't have an opportunity to kind of just go bend rims for a couple of years uh, here in Tempe. Uh, and then moving it down or moving it up to uh, the main line at Villanova, Malcolm Thomas, a local guy, going to take a trip to the Nova and spend some time there with uh, with their program. I think we need to keep our eyes on that one as well for yeah. uh, a potential commitment to watch there. Um, all right, Josh, a couple sneaky ones. Let's throw a couple out there. David Punch is going to be visiting NC State. Very productive guy. Big Very. fan of David Punch's. I mean, last yeah. time I saw him, he was leading uh, Drive Nation to an upset win over um, Team Thad at, at Peach Jam. And Punch was like the guy on that in that game. He was fantastic. Um, very productive. Uh, great rebounder, great scorer, all that. NC State seems like a nice fit. Like, this definitely one to kind of, you know, at least perk interest. Griffin Greenberg, our, our uh, intern over the year that spent a lot of time with the EYBL, was super high on David Punch. Yeah. And would almost ring, you know, uh, sing his praises as well. Uh, a couple other guys that I want to bring uh, bring up here in the Midwest or, or the Plains, really. Brooks, Brooks Barr, uh, Texan, one of the best players in the Under Armour circuits, taking a visit to Nebraska. And a guy that you really like a lot in Hudson Greer is taking a trip to Iowa. Yeah, quite frankly, that just seems like you're like, yep, that makes sense. Yeah, that could fit pretty well. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I'm sure Greer is going to wait, wait that one out and kind of this is probably an establishing trip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure, sure. Five, so, but yeah, I mean that the, when you kind of think about it, you're like, yeah, that pairing does the shoe fits. Yeah, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, one that I'm watching out here in the West is Jalil Martin taking a visit to Pepperdine. Listen, if you've ever talked to me before, you know that I have a huge respect for Lorenzo Romar and his ability to identify pro-level players. I think Jaleel Martin is very interesting um, now that uh, Romar is at Pepperdine, best campus in the world. Um, I was going to say, that seems like the campus I would most want to visit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like Jaleel, Jaleel Martin a lot. I liked what I saw from him at Section 7. Um, I think he's got a chance to really grow into quite a player. I, th- I think that's everything. I don't. I, my medicine is really working overtime now, Josh. I've got else? I've got one to watch um, from our from our uh, own backyard from our hoop scene association. Jay and right. Walker, uh, one of one player. He is going to St. Bonaventure, so that is just one to kind of keep an eye on. He's already visited Georgia State and several others, so it seems like his kind of journey on the recruiting trail is kind of starting to dwindle a little bit, starting to wind down. So maybe a commitment from Jay and Walker could be imminent. Keep a close watch on Woj. Woj will probably break the news. Yeah, to- right. He's he's the St. Bonaventure whisperer and also the biggest fan. So, No question. Well, thanks for suffering through this uh, Fast Break Friday. Sorry about all this. Uh, I'm probably going to take a, a seven-hour nap. So if you if you need me and I don't answer, forgive me, uh, but certainly trying to, trying to put it all together. Josh, this was good stuff. Uh, we'll be back again on Monday of next week with a commitment catch-up. Maybe we may see some of these guys off the board. By that time, uh, we'll go through it all. And also, if you're watching it, let me get a couple plugs in real quick. For high school teams thinking about the fall this year, you want to be a part of Claim the Crown. It's our unbelievable opportunity for your team to really kind of start your journey to state championship. We're going to run something at Swanee Sports Academy in October. Go to hoopscene.com slash events. If you if you like the border league out here in the West, we're going to see it up in the, in the mid-Atlantic this year. It's the same idea. Uh, four games, one on Friday, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Uh, we're going to run them at Swanee Sports Academy in October. Big time opportunity for high school teams to go head to head. We've already got a number of high level teams. Grayson, we talked about them. Jakari Harris, they'll be involved. Um, Gray Academy, great, great collegiate academy, excuse me, South Carolina, Hamilton Heights. Um, we've got a number of other, other teams that, that we're working on that I don't want to mention them quite yet, but some big time programs from out of the state of Georgia are also going to be on board as well. So go to hoopsie.com slash events, go check that out. Okay, now I'm done. I can't talk anymore. We're out. Josh, appreciate you. Thank you.